red alert, red alert. So Lyft sends out this email, right? Terms of service are being updated again. Not many people read those 20 plus pages, but you should, you should, because a lot of fine print in there. If you guys want me to break it down, I can definitely have one of uh, the attorneys that I work with look at it and then I can give you their take in a follow-up video. But um, here's the alarming thing, right? They say that if you continue driving, you have reviewed our terms, right? And you've accepted our terms of service. So let's say you get this email, you haven't really even read the email and you continue driving. Well, according to them, which I find highly illegal, right? Is that the moment you keep on driving, we assume you've reviewed it, you've agreed to it, right? Here's the sneaky part. This is why I'm making the video. If you didn't catch that, um, if you didn't catch that update, that email, and you continue driving, you've accepted their terms. And let's say you didn't opt out within 30 days. Here's, here's the big thing. You have to opt out out of every single update, whether it's update of terms of service with Uber, update of terms of service with Lyft, you have to opt out in 30 days. They usually give you the verbiage. If you don't see the verbiage in those 20 plus pages, I've made several videos how to send it to Lyft or Uber and opt out. Why is opting out so important? If you do not opt out, they literally have you by the testicles, right? Which means if anything happens, accident, death, money not paid, you can't go against them in civil court. You can't get yourself a good attorney and fight them in court. Why? Because you have now agreed to their arbitration. Arbitration, yes, fast resolutions, very little money in arbitrations. And most of the times, who pays the arbitrator or who pays the American Association of Arbitrators? Uber and Lyft do. So you don't really stand a chance. Most of the times, the arbitrators will side, sadly, with Uber and Lyft. So your power has been diminished by accepting these terms of service. That's why you opt out. You opt out within 30 days, please, folks. Every single update, you opt out. If you missed one update, if you missed to opt out of one update, you're done. They've got you, right? And if, if crap goes wrong and you think, oh, I'm going to get myself a great attorney and the attorney uh, finds out that you know, you didn't opt out, they're not going to represent you because it gets pushed into arbitration. Maybe the attorney will represent you in arbitration, but you're not going to get the big money, right? You're not going to get the big money. Now, there are a couple of haters out there. Um, you know, as you can see in my email, it says the dear Torsten, I, I hold an active Lyft account and I hold an active fleet account, right? In fact, I have JV's joint ventures with three uh, fleet owners around the country because I have multiple cars. Not on my own one here in LA, but I also do JVs in other states, right? And these haters, I'm not going to give them the power or call out their name. They say, I don't drive. I have news for you. If you go back to the origin of my channel, I was the person that came up with the slogan, work smart don't work hard. Every other YouTuber has used that slogan since. Now, how do I still work smart in rideshare? I personally don't think there's any money in UberX and Lyft regular, right? They just, I mean, unless you want to cherry pick, cherry pick, cherry pick, cherry pick, cherry pick, decline, 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 and maybe accept one. Yeah, you're going to sit around making a couple of money trips. But the, the, to me, there's no money in X or regular. It starts getting semi-attractive in XL, but you can make a lot of money in Lux and Black and SUV, right? How do I do that? I have over 300 private clients, right? So I drive on um, my own private company platform, if you can call it. Some, that's not right, share. These are my private clients. And... If I'm not making 500 a day with private clients, 3,500 a week minimum, I'm not happy, 
right? I want to, with private clients, I want to hit the 4K club consistently, and I do, right? 4K club every single week with private clients and higher. Some days can be two grand. But here's the thing. When do I still engage with rideshare, right? What I do is, if I know I'm picking up at LEX on a specific date, I have, um, I have people that schedule one week, two week, three weeks in advance, private trips. I look at Ubers and Lyft schedule trips in my area. I only go to high end areas, Malibu, Westlake, Calabasas, Thousand Oaks, and the big one, Hidden Hills, big money, right? These are gated communities. I know who I'm picking up, there's safety checks, it's safe. Getting people in my car um, through these scheduled trips that are, it's a safe trip, right? Now, if I'm picking up a private client at LAX at 11 a.m., for example, and there is a scheduled trip at 9.30 or 9 a.m., I'm going to go and pick up that scheduled trip on the Uber or Lyft platform, right? and drive them to LAX and wait for 30 minutes and then monetize my private trip out. That to me is working smart, not hard. So I constantly, I even have in my team, I have six people working for me, checking the scheduled trips all the time. Does this make sense? Does this fit into his schedule? Yes, and they'll email it to me and I will reserve it. I'll pick them up as long as it's a, it, as long as it's a airport trip in a good area, right? And the pickups in Calabasas, Westlake, Hidden Hills, I will monetize the inbound and on the outbound, I'm getting the private client anyway. So you're literally double dipping. That to me is using rideshare haters, right? Those people that write those or make those hate videos, right? That is how I roll with rideshare. If you would copy that formula, you'd be actually making money. It, it, you know, and um, okay, enough said, right? Enough said. I've had a back and forth with a couple of, of, of YouTubers in the past. You'll always bang heads. There, there's always, let's admit, there's always a bit of an ego. Uh, we can't completely remove our ego. There's always a little bit of an ego and some competition involved here from YouTuber to YouTuber. I'm just telling you the subscriber because you're part of my channel. I'm here to help you get better pay and um, better safety. That's my number one goal, to be an advocate for you. Uh, what's the, also the goal of my channel is to teach you other ways to, to open your mind, to, to think outside of the box and look at rideshare from different angles, how to create multiple avenues or multiple revenue avenues within rideshare, you know, starting your own private company, your limo company, starting your own fleet, referrals which are unfortunately gone that that well has dried up right once upon a time you could make twenty thirty thousand dollars a month on referrals those times are gone right but they are all always still opportunities within opportunities that's what this channel is about uh trolls and haters um really don't phase me at the end of the day because i know who i am right i i know myself right and i always say you got to be in tune with yourself. You got to love yourself before you can really love other people, right? Make sure you are okay with you and make sure, make sure you take care of you. So as I speak to you, your number one priority is to keep yourself safe because without the safety, you are not making the money, right? If you're six feet underground because you got shot in the back of your head while you're doing ride share, what is all the planning? What are all the videos you've watched of good use? They're not. They, they mean nothing if you do not follow your daily safety protocol. Dash cams, uh, if you can carry a firearm in a specific state, I would recommend that, right? Because you come first, right? Or a taser, or a knife, or pepper spray, whatever it takes, right? You got to keep yourself safe first before you can make money. So again, uh, went a little bit off track as I usually do, but the introduction of my video, um, again, I summed it up there. Uber and Lyft constantly update their terms of service. 
a very sneaky way of Lyft to say, oh, we sent you an email, you automatically kept on driving, so we automatically assume you reviewed it and you accepted it. I would say that's highly illegal, and I don't think that they can pull that shit on the next email because attorneys will be attacking them on that, right? Because in the past, it would say there was a button, hey, I accept and I continue driving. I accept the terms of service. There's a button, click on it. I accept the terms. I continue on driving. They'll keep on feeding you trips. And then hopefully, hopefully you're one of the people that writes the email or the letter to the legal department and says, hey, I'm opting out. Even if you write the letter to the legal department, right? If you don't have the address of the legal department, hit me up. I'll send it to you. But you got to opt out within 30 days, right? And if you are sending a letter to the legal department, make sure it's via registered mail so you can say, oh, I sent it to this address. So if, it, if the dispute does come up, if you do have to go to court, if there's an accident, if somebody has been shot, if they've stolen your money, if they've stolen your tips, if they've wrongfully deactivated you, you can actually go out and get an attorney, right, and hit them hard versus being dragged into arbitration. So please opt out, opt out, opt out every single time there's an update. There is an update right now. Any Lyft driver, including myself, you got it, right? It's there. And read the fine print. It's on my thumbnail. It says... Because you've kept on driving, we assume that you automatically reviewed our terms of service and they are now binding. Do yourself the favor, read those 20, 23 pages, see what you're agreeing to. You're agreeing to a lot of crap. And as I promised before, I'm repeating myself, I can do a follow-up video, a follow-up video for you after sending that over to an attorney and say, hey, do me a favor, look through this legal verbiage and try and pick up things that I personally cannot see. I'm not an attorney, right? I do know, I know a lot about the law. I've studied parts of the law, but I'm not an attorney, right? And if you have an attorney look over those pages, they can say, oh, drivers should be aware of A, B, and C on page five, clause six, or on page 15, clause 17, right? That is what your drivers should look out for because those are the little new things that they've snuck into the terms of service. Those terms of service are never pretty. They always sneak something in and make you agree to it, which is usually to the benefit of the company, right? So your comments, your thoughts. Hey, why don't I just put this question out there? Have you opted out? Have you opted out this latest lift terms of service if yes yes I, I i received it and i opted out good then and let me know if you've opted out of all prior all previous um terms of service agreements just let me know if you've actually opted out all of them right if you have that's great if you've forgotten one or two that's really bad especially when it comes to class action lawsuits and uh if things go wrong Right, if things go wrong, you know, and you have a good attorney and you've opted out of all these terms of service, you can potentially collect a lot of money, right? So have a great day, everyone. Please like and subscribe, share the video on Twitter, on Facebook pages, so we can educate as many people as possible to always, always, always opt out. Be safe out there and take care of you. Thank you.